Hey everybody, welcome back. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how to use JavaScript libraries in your Ruby on Rails Stimulus JS program. And we're going to start out with the date picker component. So if you've been following my channel for some time, you probably already know that in this series, I've been updating an old version of my stock scanning program and updating it to the latest version of Ruby on Rails and swapping out the front end from using jQuery, which is the old way of doing Ruby on Rails front end, to Stimulus.js and Turbo as a front end JavaScript library. jQuery tends to be really messy to use in a Ruby on Rails program, and you could easily end up with code in JavaScript that's scattered throughout different templates in different places, and it gets very disorganized and difficult to maintain. One of the things I like about Stimulus.js is that it allows you to do most of the same stuff with the same level of simplicity, but it gives you some structure to work with. So the strategy that I'm using to convert this app is by starting with a fresh Rails application, I'm copying over core parts of the code and I'm refactoring as necessary and as I see fit. So it's basically going to be a completely fresh Ruby on Rails application that does the exact same thing, but eventually with some added enhancements. In this episode, I'm going to start with the date picker component on the filters here so that I could go back in time and look at reports on any given date. And here's how it works in the old application. And this was originally powered by a jQuery library component called jQuery UI. And because we're not using jQuery anymore as a dependency, and I don't want to introduce that library as a dependency, I'm going to have to use something else. And I found a tool called DatePicker.js, which I think is a good standalone alternative. And I already use JS Date Picker in the US Treasury Yield Curve website that I own and maintain. And it works pretty well there, so I'm going to introduce it here into this program. You can install this library by using npm with the command npm install js-datepicker. And make sure that you have the JS dash in front of your command because if you just type in date picker without that prefix, it'll download another library that doesn't seem to be an active project. So now that this JS date picker library is downloaded, how do we use it in our Rails app with the Stimulus JS framework? The instructions say that you have to import the library and then create a date picker object. And I initially thought that you'd have to do this in the JavaScript initialization file where you load stimulus and bootstrap, but I quickly found out that this isn't the best place to call this library. With stimulus, it actually works better if you write a separate stimulus controller and import it into that file, which is reusable, and then you could treat it more like an isolated component. So here's my controller code. Just like the instructions for the library specify, I initialize a date picker object here with some custom settings on how I want that to behave and how I want it to appear. And as far as how I'm telling it what to apply this to, I'm just passing in the target from stimulus right there, which is picker. One of the nice new features I noticed about the new stimulus generator that I just showed you on the command line there is that it automatically adds the registration for that controller here to your index.js file. And here's the partial where I'm making use of the date picker. So I've isolated this into a separate file inside my application directory, and it's actually called from the report header. So I'm rendering the report, it calls this header partial, and then from there it renders the date picker. And the date picker makes use of the data controller for date picker. And of course here is the target being specified. It's on that text field. And here is the result in action. We have our date picker. And uh, now if I select a date though, I still can't really go anywhere because I don't have that filtering code in place yet. So I'm going to build that next. Making that correction was as simple as passing in the report date parameter to my interactor here which builds the report. And notice how I'm using the Ruby, the new Ruby 3.1 syntax, where if you're passing in a variable as a hash, all you have to do is pass in the hash key. So 
this is equivalent to doing this report date hash key report date variable. Now you could just do the uh, hash key and not have to specify the variable if it's the same name. Uh, let's take a look at this function here that builds a report date. So it parses out the report date so you could pass in the um, date in several different ways. And if none of these work, it'll pick out the most recent date. And uh, here's where it inserts it into the query, inserts it right there, formatting it as part of the large SQL query that's run to build this report. So now I can go ahead and pick pretty much any day in the past from all the data that I have. And it'll refresh report accordingly. So here's a peek at the original code that I had in my old version of the program. As you can see here, I have the initialization for the date picker up in the head of the document. It's not very good organization of the code. It's kind of hard to find that here. So this is a little bit weird. Uh, and I'm using the jQuery identifier to find that element. But another feature that I also have that's stuffed in here is this set timeout, which does an automatic reload of the page. So if I have this page up at any point during the day, I want to constantly refresh so that if I happen to reopen that window or if I have it on another screen here in my office, it'll always show what the latest stock quotes are. And I think a good way of reintroducing this to my program is probably to include it somewhere as another stimulus JS controller in the new program. And we'll just put this in there as the connect method. And why don't we just give that a try? Okay, so here's that controller. In the connect method for the controller, I have the refresh time set in a variable here. Right now it's set to two seconds and uh, we're using the set timeout and it's just going to do a quick reload of the page every two seconds. And if we pull this up, you can see here that the page is refreshing every two seconds. And we'll go back ahead and change this back to five minutes, which is uh, 300 seconds and the rate that this is reloading should slow down. And the way that I'm having this controller initialized is in my show template, I have the data controller set to this page auto reload here at the very top in the topmost class. So I hope this video gives you an overview of some of the things that you could do with stimulus controllers in your code to make it more modular, make it a lot more cleaner than you ever could with the jQuery system that we used in previous versions of Rails. And I showed you how to import a library from NPM and make use of it. So if you like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more information like this. If you want to see the actual code itself, sign up for my Patreon and I'll give you access to the private GitHub repository. See you in the next video. Bye.